Good morning. This is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Social media was a driving force behind the turnout at Wednesday's abortion rights protest in downtown Sioux Falls. Police say word of the protest spread quickly across private social media platforms. Police say they knew of the protest days earlier and that helped them prepare for the crowds up to a point. We could learn about something ahead of time that can help us prepare for stuff but during the event that social media can spread and it could just attract even more people that we weren't prepared for. Police say the social media messaging ahead of the protest wasn't clear as to whether the demonstration would be peaceful or confrontational. Sioux Falls Police Chief John Toome says the department's goal during the abortion rights protests was to keep people safe. He says police did everything they could to make sure protesters did not get hurt, even when things started to get confrontational. Toome says a protest like this without a permit is a fluid situation, and his department tried to adapt as the confusion unfolded. Escalate but restrain, right? Because you notice this is declared an unlawful assembly, not a riot, right? Chemical agents were not used. It's not a cookie cutter response for every incident. Each one has to be judged as it unfolds. Police blocked off streets, issued a dispersal order, and in the end, arrested six people. Starting today, mandatory critical race theory trainings and orientations are banned at South Dakota universities. Supporters of the measure that made its way through this year's legislature say it will protect students and faculty from CRT. In a news release, Governor Kristi Noem says colleges should be a place where freedom of thought shouldn't be stifled by indoctrination. Opponents of the ban say CRT isn't even being taught in uh, schools at all levels. CRT is a legal theory taught in law school examining the role of racism in legal systems. Turning to weather now with meteorologist Scott Munt. Could we see some rain for the holiday weekend, Scott? Well, we could. It'll be scattered in nature, uh, not really a washout. And I do think our best chances to see the showers and thunderstorms will be at night in eastern Kettleland. It'll happen a little sooner in the day across western, maybe even central South Dakota. For today, you can expect temperatures to reach the 80s. This will happen with mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies and light winds. I'll have more details on the Kettleland Live Doppler forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. A Glenham, South Dakota man is heading to federal prison after pleading guilty to bank fraud. Court documents say that between September 2018 and February 2019, 43-year-old Gabe Outram exe uh, executed a scheme to defraud the Core Trust Bank branch in Leola, South Dakota. He was branch manager and vice president at the time and could approve loans up to $200,000 without having to send the application for review. He made a loan in the name of a bank customer and then used the money for himself. Outram will spend just under two years behind bars, followed by five years of supervised release. He will also have to pay back over $144,000 in restitution. Police in Watertown are asking for the public's help in solving a vandalism case. The department says it happened at multiple parks across town, including Nelson Park, Highland Park, Diamond Ball Park, and Morningside Park. They add that it took place throughout last month. The damage includes spray paint and markers, as well as broken items inside bathrooms. If you have any information about these incidents or would like to report other vandalism in the community, you're asked to call the Watertown Police Department. When you see someone pulled over on the side of the road by law enforcement, there's a chance it could be an unlicensed driver. Data on the top five traffic citations from the five most populous cities in the state shows that unlicensed driver tickets are among the most common. Sioux Falls alone cited 1,563 drivers for no license or permit. To learn more about the most common traffic citations in the state, check out a Keloland.com original right here on our website. Kathy Boysen is keeping the historic Stidworthy Kemper House up and running in the Viberg community. While she has already done many renovations and restoration projects on the property, there's still more to do. I would like to get some more of the older windows replaced because it's really cold in the winter with the windows we have. Um, I'd like to get the floors refinished and a few things like that. Um, bigger picture, we have a couple of rooms upstairs that aren't in use because they're not finished, and I'm hoping to do that. 
In the next couple of years, she'd also like to restore the staircase in the home. Since the property is historic, Boyson is working to keep the renovations as true to the original style as possible. A skateboarding event comes to South Dakota next week. The InnoSkate Festival will be in Pine Ridge on July 5th and then Sioux Falls at the Levitt July 7th to the 9th. The event features discussions, demonstrations, live concerts, and even a best trick contest. The festival is free. And that is a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. Scott? All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, Futurecast for today. Stopped at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Notice how it's dry in the western South Dakota. Give it an hour or two after that, and then we'll watch our thunderstorms develop. You see that by 7 o'clock. Rapid City, areas of the hills, looking at a pretty good chance for showers and storms. Whatever develops will move to the east. And by the evening hours, we may see something in central and south central South Dakota. That will try to hold together as it continues to move into eastern and southeastern Kettleland for the overnight. A couple of lingering showers may greet us tomorrow morning in eastern South Dakota. And then we'll do it again. Look for developing thunderstorms in western South Dakota during the late afternoon hours or evening. And then they will move to the east as we do go through the evening and overnight. And we'll also have to watch for severe weather. Today's chance, western southwestern South Dakota, slight risk for severe weather. Hail and wind being the main threat. Tomorrow, marginal risk, western, central, and northern South Dakota. And then uh, much of South Dakota is in that marginal risk for Sunday. Again, we think hail and wind probably the main threat out of uh, any storms that do develop. And our winds will remain light for today. They'll start to favor a southeasterly direction as we do go over the next several days. And that will help increase the humidity. And that's the reason why in the seven-day forecast, we do have that 20 to 40% chance for showers or thunderstorms. But I do think a lot of that may fall at night in eastern South Dakota, Minnesota, and Iowa. So our forecast for today showing temperatures in the 80s. Shower and thunderstorm chances tonight across the east as numbers fall to the 50s and 60s. And then for tomorrow, temperatures in the 70s, 80s to lower 90s. And again, you could always check the seven-day forecast while you're here online. Have a great weekend.